All right, welcome back. We're on part two. These may get stitched together into a single video later, but um, for now, video number two. Um, so I was cooling down my racquetball here in the liquid nitrogen, and we are gonna take that cold, cold racquetball, and whoops, I closed my liquid nitrogen, and pull it out of there once again, and come over here with it, and watch out everybody. All right, so. <laughs> They're little frozen racquetball parts. Um, so yeah, just made that really cold because we had some liquid nitrogen on hand. Try that at home if you can get some liquid nitrogen. Um, all right, so we're back to the question of what is it that makes the water molecules stick together like that at room temperature, whereas nitrogen at room temperature spreads apart. Um, and it all comes down to something that I can show you right here. So we can do a close up now, show my hands. Um, so this is a model of nitrogen molecules. Here are two nitrogen molecules. And as you can see, those things don't really pull each other, don't attract each other at all. Um, here is my model of water molecules. And these water molecules have the property that those are going to attract each other. Um, we'll talk about why they're attracting each other in just a minute, um, but just to kind of extend that idea, if I have a collection of nitrogen molecules um, and those things do not attract each other strongly, as they're all moving around, you can see they just spread out and go everywhere in the container. And that's what gases do. Um, if, on the other hand, I have a collection of molecules that do attract each other strongly, even if we start with them all spread out like this, as they move around randomly, they clump together. And that's what liquid molecules do. All right, so what is it that makes the water molecules attract each other? Well, we've already studied one property of molecules. Can you go back on me? Thank you. We've already studied one property of molecules um, that would cause them to attract each other. Um, think for a minute, see if you remember what that is. Okay, so uh, anyone get that? That water molecules have the property that they are polar. And polar molecules, as we know, have a positive end and a negative end. Um, I think I may have held up these magnets when we were first talking about that. Have a positive and a negative end, um, sort of like magnetic poles. These are electrical poles in polar molecules, um, but that attract each other. Um, turns out, though, that attractions between polar molecules or attractions between dipoles um, are not the only type of attraction between molecules. And so I want to talk with you very quickly about the three major kinds of intermolecular attractions because it's those intermolecular attractions that allows different phases to exist. So let's come on over here. And excuse me, Amos, camera needs to come through. Come on through, camera. Excuse me, Nicole, camera needs to come through. Get this. Oh, my All right. So um, there are three major types of intermolecular attractions that we are going to talk about. And I have these ranked here in order from strongest to weakest. I forgot to write that on here. So let me do this Mommy. stronger okay. as we go that way. Um, and the type of attraction we were just talking about between polar molecules or dipoles, dipole means two poles, so a polar molecule has a positive and a negative pole, so it's a dipole. Attractions between polar molecules we call dipole-dipole attractions. Um, and those are kind of the medium strength attractions that molecules can have. Um, there's a weaker form of attraction called London forces, um, which are attractions that exist between all molecules. Any molecules, whether they're polar or nonpolar, will attract each other at least a little bit through London forces. And London forces are created by a shifting electron cloud. So we know molecules are surrounded by that cloud of electrons. And just as the molecules move around, that cloud of electrons isn't static. And so uh, even though a nonpolar molecule on the average will have its electrons distributed evenly around it so that there are no poles, at any one moment, the electrons may be more to one side or the other and create what we call temporary dipoles. And so those temporary dipoles allow molecules to attract each other. Um, that will be stronger for bigger molecules. The bigger a molecule is, the stronger the London forces will be between those molecules because bigger molecules have more electrons and so there can be more shifting of the cloud, um, more unbalance of the electrons, allowing more attraction. Um, 
the final type of intermolecular attraction and the strongest type is what we would call hydrogen bonding. A little bit of a confusing term because it uses the word bonding, but it's not actually a chemical bond, not as strong as an actual chemical bond, but this is an intermolecular attraction, an attraction between molecules that exists between certain hydrogen containing molecules. Um, in order to do hydrogen bonding, molecules have to have hydrogen in them, first of all, and then within the molecule, the hydrogen needs to be bonded to, so actually covalently bonded to, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. The special thing about these three molecules is they are all highly electronegative, which means they'll attract the electrons they're sharing with hydrogen very strongly to them. Um, and they're also very small, which means that when they attract those electrons strongly, those electrons are very concentrated around the outside of those atoms. Um, let me give you a few examples of molecules that can do hydrogen bonding. Um, so our first example and probably most important example is H2O. So water molecules, aside from being polar and having the dipole-dipole attractions that we know exist, um, will have hydrogen bonds between the molecules. And the important thing to remember is that the hydrogen bond is an attraction between molecules. So here is an example of a hydrogen bond between this water molecule and that water molecule. And that hydrogen bond exists because, once again, this hydrogen is itself bonded to the oxygen over here. So this covalent bond within the molecule is important to help to create the conditions that are required for hydrogen bonding to happen, but this itself is not the hydrogen bond. Again, the hydrogen bond is an intermolecular attraction, an attraction between molecules. Um, so this hydrogen, because oxygen is pulling electrons away from it very strongly, so this is a polar bond with a negative end over there, a positive end over there, pulling the electrons away very strongly, it leaves this hydrogen almost exposed, just a proton sitting here, because remember, hydrogen only has that one electron. Um, and so there's a very strong positive charge right here, which is then attracted to the negative charge on this oxygen and its unshared electron pair. And that's the hydrogen bond. Again, just a very strong intermolecular attraction. Um, ammonia in H3 is another one that can do hydrogen bonding because once again, hydrogen covalently bonded to nitrogen pulling the electrons strongly away from the hydrogen, allowing it to attract strongly to the unshared electron pair on the neighboring nitrogen. An example with fluorine, HF, hydrogen fluoride. Fluorine, hydrogen, this hydrogen has its electrons pulled strongly away by that fluorine, allowing this hydrogen bond to form between the hydrogen and the neighboring fluorine. Um, finally, an example of something that has hydrogen in it and has fluorine in it, but can't form hydrogen bonds. Um, CH3F. Think for a minute about why this one wouldn't form hydrogen bonds. So we have hydrogen, we have fluorine, the two things that we said are needed in order to do hydrogen bonding, but one of the conditions isn't being met. Okay, so if you've had a chance to think about it or pause the video for a second because I'm about to tell you, um, what we've got going on here is that this hydrogen won't be strongly attracted to the fluorine over here because it doesn't have its electrons pulled strongly away by a fluorine. So remember, the hydrogen needs to be bonded to nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine to have its electrons pulled away enough. Carbon here is pulling electrons away from the hydrogen a little bit. It's slightly more electronegative, but not strongly enough to create the really concentrated positive charge over here to attract to the unshared electron pair on the fluorine over there. So no hydrogen bonding in this case. So we have to have, once again, hydrogen within its own molecule covalently bonded to nitrogen, fluorine, or oxygen, and then between molecules, you'll get that strong hydrogen bonding. Um, and the hydrogen bonding is one of the things that causes water to clump together in the liquid phase at room temperature. Um, I will share with y'all some uh, information about how water is really special this way and hydrogen bonding um, gives it a lot of properties that are unusual and important for water. All right, thanks. That was the end of my first video for our distance learning. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.